Hello and welcome to another Hand Drink Solar Wine Info video and today we are discussing the Fram Grenache Gris 2021. So in this video I want to achieve four things. Firstly we're going to discuss this reclusive wine grape grower Willy Mostad and then we're going to explore what this wine tastes and smells like in the glass. And finally, for those of you who have the stomach for it, I'm going to get slightly geekier and talk about exactly what the heck a Gris wine is. As I might have mentioned before, the South African wine is way down on the southern tip of the African continent. And uh, some of you may have heard of a region called Swartland because 20 years ago it started a revolution and really changed the way the world saw South African wines. Now, Fuerpardeberg is a region right next to Swartland, just on the southern end. And uh, sometimes it gets unkindly referred to as Swartland light because it's kind of seen as a lot of extension from the cool kids just to further north. The irony, of course, is that actually it was in the Fuerpardeberg that Swartland revolution legends like Adi Badenost and Eben Saadi in fact began working with very unusual cultivars and the winemaking style that is now famous. Put another way, these legends were working in the Fuerpardeberg before the Swartland, which means that Fuerpardeberg was cool before the Swartland was cool, which makes it about as hipster as a wine region can get. And if we zoom in a little more from Fuerpardeberg right into a farm called Veltefreda, it is managed and run by a farmer called Willy Mostad, who really does possess some nigh on Old Testament prophet prescience. For starters, Veltefreda is the home of the only Grenache Gris vineyard in the entire country, which should be enough to get any grape hunter salivating. But there's more. Willy also has planted an entire range of cultivars that include grapes like Marsan, Roussan, Grenache Blanc, Verdello, all grapes which perhaps would have appeared crazy to plant 20 years ago when all anyone wanted to talk about was Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Sauvignon. But now, 20 years later, when climate change is the number one topic that everyone wants to talk about, the fact that we have this rich variety of cultivars in the ground in the Fuerpardmach is largely thanks to the vision of Willy Mostaf. So while he may not have brought all of these cultivars into the country, his commitment to plant cultivars that are better suited to the climate in which he found himself really does make him something of a pioneer in the region. But enough about the region of Fuerpardeberg. What is this wine like in the glass? The color is the first thing that tells you that there's something weird going on. There's a sort of Aperol spritz energy coming out of this. And there are two reasons for this. The first is that Gris cultivars, while being called Gris, which means gray, often have pinky orange hues as opposed to being green or yellow. And at this point you might become agitated and irate and scream, oh, I drink Pinot Gris all the time and it never looks like that in the glass. Well, the second reason for the color is that this particular wine is a skin contact Grenache Gris. This means that the juice and the skin stay in contact for far longer, three weeks in this case, than would happen when making an ordinary white wine. And so this gives far more opportunity for those phenols and colors to leach out of the skins and into the juice. And speaking of polyphenols, let's give this guy a whiff and see what we smell. So, I mean, it's really interesting. Up front, there is this kind of savory, flinty element. There's also fresh earth. There is a savory, meaty element and even dried oregano. But beneath the savory notes, and some of these will blow off over time, there's also much sweeter, sometimes confected elements. We have pink musk sweets, and we have a lovely sort of bittersweet, dark Oxford marmalade thing going on. And when we take a sip, those sweeter elements really push through onto the palate. Except now, added into that, we also got spicy orange rind and some sour red cherry. And to be honest, at this point, I'm not entirely sure how many of the flavor notes that I'm detecting are in fact driven by the tricks that my eyes are playing on me when I look at this Aperol Sprit style orange wine. Because we know when we look at a glass of red juice, we assume strawberry and raspberry. And so when I'm looking at this, it's got a pinky orange hue and I don't know whether I'm smelling raspberries or citrus or candy floss. It really is quite a sensory conundrum. Finally, there are the tannins. We take another sip and swirl it around our mouth. You might say, I have no idea what a tannin is. Well, if you want to figure it out, do what I just did and make sure you get the wine up between your teeth and your top lip. When you've swallowed, you'll feel how your teeth stick to your top lip. And that is essentially the role that tannins play in drying out your mouth. There's a whole nother video on the science of saliva and tannins and why it does that to your mouth. And you can watch that 
at a later date, I will leave a link in the comment section alongside this video. So if all you wanted were some flavor notes, you can tune out now, but if you're still with me, you can pour yourself another glass of this fascinating wine, and I'm gonna give you some slightly more in-depth content on a few other cultivars that also carry green mutations. We've already mentioned Pinot Gris, which is of course a mutation from Pinot Noir, and this has been around in France for at least 800 years. Pinot Gris is by far the most widely grown Gris cultivar on the planet, and while it did originate from France, the biggest plantings are to be found in Italy first, and then at about a quarter of that, the United States. It's massively popular in both those countries, but it's worth noting that wine growers are not blind to the potential of Pinot Gris in South Africa. And in 2021, it was amongst the most planted cultivars, mostly because it can produce large quantities with relatively little fuss in the vineyards and is therefore a potential cash cow for struggling grape farmers. And finally, there is the incredible enigmatic Semillon Gris, which exists nowhere else in the world other than South Africa. The sucker is supremely mysterious, so much so in fact that there's an urban legend that it mutates from Semillon to Semillon Gris one vintage and then magically transforms or mutates back to Semillon the next vintage and no one knows how it happens. But I went and chatted to two viticulturists. One is Jakob Engelbrecht from Visual Viticulture in South Africa and the other is Dr. Dylan Grigg from Australia, both of them supreme authorities in their field. And from what I understand, this is not actually the case. Because what happens is a mutation can happen in a new bud. Now that bud that is mutated will give rise eventually to a shoot and then a flower that carries that mutation. That flower, if pollinated, will give rise to fruit that also carries that mutation. So now on a semillon vine, you have semillon gris fruit. At the end of harvest, once all the fruit has been removed, if you lop off that particular shoot, that mutation will have been removed from the vine, and the vine itself may have remained in its entirety a semillon vine. And so you come around next time and feel like the vine is perhaps mutated back, but in actual fact, you simply lost the mutation by chopping it off. But if you nurture this little mutated bud and allow it to grow from a shoot into a cane, and the cane will eventually become old wood over three vintages or so, you now have a fairly stable piece of genetic material from which you can take cuttings graft them onto rootstock, and plant your own semillon gris vines. So it's not that semillon gris mutates back and forth, but rather that the source of the mutation is sometimes removed during pruning. So there you have it, a little exploration of Grenache gris, Pinot gris, and even semillon gris, which is perhaps not quite as mysterious as once we thought. All of them are worth hunting down just so that you can connect this information with an actual sensory experience. And if you enjoyed this video, I would encourage you to subscribe to the Hand Drink Solar YouTube channel where I release six videos every month talking about unusual cultivars, rising winemaking stars, and some of the fascinating wines coming out of the dynamic South African wine.